Hi everyone, my name is Allison and I am a knitter based in Nebraska and today I have something a little bit different to share with you. So I am doing, I guess, kind of a haul video. I'm showing you what I picked up on my recent vacation to Vancouver. It is also my birthday. It's actually my birthday today when I'm filming this. This definitely won't go up on my birthday, but I am treating myself to a little bit of a long lunch to show you everything that I <laughs> bought for myself for my birthday and a couple of little treats that I've gotten from my family. So if you are interested in seeing lots of yarny and fiber goodness, please stick in. If you are not and in more interested in like a normal knitting podcast style video, stay tuned because I will have a knitting podcast for you soon. I have been working on a ton of different stuff, two different test knits, so that is coming. I just need a little bit of time to film, but I figured not everybody really loves both, so I would split up two different videos and make sure that, you know, if you're interested in all the fiber stuff, all of the new yarny goodness that you can stick in and watch this video. I made myself a little um, matcha lemonade. I had never had one before. I basically, I just saw like a picture of one online and I was like, it must just be matcha mixed with lemonade and I made one, it's delicious. But like I said, I have a literal <laughs> giant basket full of stuff to show you. So I think what I'm going to do is do things kind of in chronological order. So I have recently come back from a trip to Vancouver. We did kind of like an extra long weekend up to Vancouver for a wedding in the family. It's my husband's cousin's wedding that had been put off for a couple of years because of COVID. So we've been like really looking forward to this for a really long time. And like during the two years that it got put off, I got super into knitting and all kinds of fiber art. So it worked out to go to like a super, you know, fiber arty city, actually just kind of art in general. Vancouver's really kind of a cool city. There's murals absolutely everywhere. So like art is just like integrated into day-to-day -day life in a way that it's not here in Lincoln. So that was really cool to see. But we went to Vancouver with my husband's family and his mom, Nancy, is also super into knitting. So we made a real point to check out a lot of knit shops. So I will show you what we did in order. Okay, so I have everything from my basket is organized around me, loosely in order. If, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you might be like, where is she? I am actually down in the living room. We literally went from one heat wave to another. So when we were in Vancouver, it was during the middle of the heat wave, it was so hot, like 90 degrees in Fahrenheit basically every single day <clears throat> and not a lot of places have air conditioning. We actually really lucked out uh, that our Airbnb had air conditioning because that would have been brutal to try to sleep through. But we went from it being like 90 degrees every day and <laughs> pretty hot for like wedding activities there in Vancouver back home to it being 100 degrees every day. So I am not sitting in the attic. It is just way, way too hot up there but you can enjoy my very much unfinished living room. If you haven't watched any of my, oh boy, hold on. That was some sass. My cat just um, punched his way through that door there. You wanna go over here? He heard me talking and wanted to be involved. Anyway, I'm downstairs, I am all spread out, and I will show you everything that I picked up in Vancouver. So the first place that we went to was Sweet Georgia, which was like the number one place on my list. My mom is also a big Sweet Georgia fan, so I knew I absolutely had to make sure that we went while we were in Vancouver, and luckily, my in-laws had a car, so <laughs> they were able to drive us. It is like we were staying kind of closer to downtown. We were staying in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood, me and my husband, which was really cool. It was like 
super walkable, tons of stuff to do, like tons of really great restaurants within walking distance, which was awesome. But to get to any of the yarn shops that we went to, you would have either needed to like take an Uber there. I guess you could bike, but that would be a pretty long, very hot bike ride while we were there or just have a car. So luckily they did rent a car for their trip and we were able to tag along and um, maybe elbow in a couple of yarn stores. So I did take a bunch of like pictures and videos while we were in the store, which I'll try to put like here. Um, I did share them on Instagram, but if you don't follow me, then <laughs> you wouldn't have seen them. But inside Sweet Georgia, it's a really beautiful space. It's super like bright and light and airy. It really captures the light. Do you wanna come sit on my lap? I got Jackie coming, oh boy. This is just how we're going to have to <laughs> keep going or else he's going to be very loud. But we, hi, I know. But as I was saying, when you walk into the Sweet Georgia store, it is like really beautifully light and airy. It's in kind of a not hard to get to location, but it is not like downtown. So we did have to drive a little bit to get there, but it is like a really beautiful light and airy store. Like they've really made a good use of capturing the light that comes in through these giant windows. And you like walk in, it's bright white and then like all the colorful yarn. So there's just like each wall around you is covered in like a rainbow of different yarns. Everything's like super organized with yarn weights like near each other. Um, all of like the tough love sock yarn is on one wall. And it really is just like a really nice store. It's very pretty, it's very Instagrammable. And we did a bit of damage. So the first thing that I got were, oops, I got two skeins of their Merino silk lace yarn in the shade Oxblood. And it looks like it's showing up a little bit darker on screen than it is in real life. It's kind of like a muted oxblood in my eyes. And it is a 50% fine merino, 50% cultivated silk yarn. And each skein is 765 yards. So that's quite, I mean, that's enough for me to get a full sweater out of this. And actually, what I had done previously, like before we left on the trip, I knew that I would want to get at least like one sweater quantity worth of yarn while we were there, but I wasn't sure exactly what I would want. So essentially what I did is I created a notes app on my phone with like <laughs> quite a lot, actually quite a few different patterns that I have been like thinking about wanting to knit lately. So I just pulled in like a picture of that pattern and then what is the, the name of it? and how many yards of what kind of weight of yarn that I would need to make it in my size. So that I knew like, if I'm shopping around that I'm going to need however much bulky yarn, however much fingering weight yarn, so that I'm not buying things willy nilly and that I'm making sure that I actually buy enough. Cause especially for like souvenir yarn, you don't want to get back and then like, it turns out that you don't have enough to make the project that you had in mind or that you have like way, way, way too much and you, you know, spent money that you didn't need to on yarn that you're not gonna use. So I did that in advance. I didn't honestly really use it that much. It didn't end up being as helpful as I had thought. So I did pick this up with one or two sweaters in mind and I am going to be holding it double with mohair and I have to like gauge swatch, you know, all those things, but it should be enough of a sweater quantity to make either the bookish cardigan or the Augustans, I believe, number one. And I really like this one particular version that I've seen that somebody knit in green. And essentially they just omitted like the front frills. So on that sweater, there's like a textured panel in the front and then they put like frills on either side of the panel. And I really like how it looks without those thrills. So I think that it could look really cute for either. I haven't decided exactly which one I want to do yet. I very much need to like clear my needles before I start another sweater project. So I have a little bit of time to decide exactly what I want to do with this. But this was like one of the first yarns that I like found and touched in the store. It is unbelievably soft. It is so soft to the touch, like there's no it's not like there's no texture, but there's nothing 
like rough about it at all because it is merino and it's silk. It has a little bit of shine to it. I think it's going to make a really, really beautiful sweater. And I also really like this color for like autumn and winter. I think it'll be a beautiful piece. And I think the mixture of like a lace weight yarn with a mohair is still going to be like nice and light. It, like it, the sweater itself, the material probably won't be like super thick, which works for me because I do run warm. The other thing that I wanted to make sure that I was on the lookout for while we were on vacation was some sock yarn because I love to knit socks. It's also a really, I think it's a, like the perfect souvenir yarn because you only need one skein to make a pair of socks. It really doesn't take up much, that much like space and you can get something that's in like a fun color or a fun, you know, different texture pattern than what you would normally do. <laughs> And I did the, totally the opposite of that. So like this is the Oxblood uh, Merino Silk Lace Yarn. And this is the sock yarn I picked up. It is a different colorway. This is the Candy Apple color on their Mohair Silk Sock Yarn. This is a very interesting sock yarn. It is 50% Superwash Merino, 15% Silk, 15% mohair and 20% nylon. So it really should be like super sturdy between the nylon and the silk and the mohair even. All of that combined should make like a really soft, really nice pair of socks. So like I said, this is in the shade Candy Apple. It's super similar on this end to the Oxblood shade, but then down on this end, it's a little bit more orangey, a little bit more, um, of like a warmer toned red and then a cooler toned red on this side. I think this is just gonna make like the prettiest pair of super autumnal socks. I do really like this because there's like a little bit of variation in the skein. Like we're gonna get a little bit of different colors in it, but it's also not like super variegated. I super don't like variegated yarn. It's not my jam, not my style. So you will see basically nothing that I bought is going to be variegated because I just don't like that. But this is like as close as I will go to a multicolored yarn. Now the last thing that I got does need like a slight bit of <laughs> pre-explanation and it's that I got for my birthday a couple of drop spindles. So it's something I told my husband and mom and mother-in-law that I would like uh, for my birthday this year as I wanted to explore drop spindle. Drop spindle spinning and so my husband got me a couple of drop spindles and my mom got me a Turkish spindle. And I also was like looking for fiber while we were on vacation because I had gotten my spindles in advance. So I knew that it was something that I wanted to look for while we were on vacation because that's something a little bit special. And at the Sweet Georgia store or just Sweet Georgia in general, they do have like hand dyed fiber there. So that's something that I definitely wanted to take a look for because it's something that, you know, I obviously literally just got into. And so I picked up this little braid. So this is their Corydale braid and it's in the, sh it is in the shade Storm Chaser. So obviously I literally just said I don't like variegated yarn, but when you are spinning your own, you can kind of pull and choose what yarns go together. You know what I mean? And I think that a gradient yarn, like gradients are something that I'm definitely into. I think they look so cool in color work, but I prefer that to like a variegated where it's like splotchy or there's pooling, hate pooling. But this is something that I wanted to play around with of placing the colors where you want it in the scheme. Obviously, I literally just started spinning last week. So I have like no way of knowing like when am I going to have like the skill set to be able to like plan out where color is going to go in a skein of yarn, let alone doing it on a drop spindle. However, I have big goals. So I decided that I was going to give this a shot and see if I can make something that's a little bit of like a gentle tonal situation, like a gentle ombre. We'll see, but I just really like these colors. I actually pulled this color, like this color Storm Chaser, in two different types of fiber. So they have all of their fibers like in the same area. 
and they have a couple of different blends. So they have this Corydale, I think they have like a BFL and Silk mix maybe. I think they have Targi. I'm not, I don't really remember exactly all of the different types of fiber that they have, but they do, they have them all in like the same area. And so I was look, looking at the different types of fiber and I like pulled this one and then I pulled another one and they were in different types of fiber and it was the exact same colorway. So I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to get it. So I got it in the Cordial as I believe that I saw somewhere that it's a good type of fiber for like beginner spinners. I guess we'll find out if that is true, but I just thought it was so beautiful and I really didn't want to leave without getting some of their fiber. The problem with doing this on your phone is that you can get phone calls and stuff. So apologies if the background is slightly different because I had to move my phone, but that was everything that I got while we were at the Sweet Georgia store. It was really cool. The staff was so nice. Like it was just a really lovely experience. We spent not like a ton of time there, but we were there for a pretty good time. And the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the staff member's name was who was helping us out, but she was really sweet and it was a really lovely experience. But the next place that we went to was Granville Island which is like a section of the city where there's tons of like independent shops, like there's or independent like artists stores are all kind of in the same area. It's definitely a touristy place. Like I wouldn't call it a tourist trap. Like it's not fake. They are like actual artists making and selling their stuff there, but it is definitely like for tourists to go to. But while we were there, we went to a silk store called Sanjo Silk. I kept their business card so I would know what it was called, which was really cool. They were doing like silk weaving on like giant floor looms. They had like silk clothing that you could purchase, which was super expensive. Like I know tons and tons of work goes into like making the fabric and then making something out of that but they also had silk yarns for sale. So while we were there, I happened to see this mohair. So this is from Sanjo Silk. Let me see if they have what it's called. I don't think that they have a name for it. It just says 3603. So if that is the name, then this is color 3603 but this is a 60% mohair, 40% silk blend, and it is 52 grams per each skein. And it was only $28 Canadian, which I thought was a really good deal for 50 grams of mohair. So this is a really beautiful, like dark burgundy purple shade that I saw and was like, this would be a perfect mix to make this very slightly darker and hold it together with mohair. So I just thought that this was so beautiful it's really, really soft. Like, I know mohair is always really soft, but I have had hand-dyed mohair before that was like kind of crunchy, but there was like a stiffness to it that I didn't really love. But this being hand-dyed mohair is really, really soft. Like the fiber is really, really soft. I think it's going to work really beautifully for like an autumnal, fall, winter, sweater with all of these together. I think this should be enough. It's a little bit over 100 grams of mohair, which I think should be fine because I do most of my sweaters a little bit cropped, but I think that will be really, really beautiful. But while we were also on Granville Island, we went to a store called Maiwa, M-A-I-W-A. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is kind of like an import store. Like everything for the most part, I think was from India. They had like a lot of like dyeing kits where you could do your own indigo dye, do your own like walnut dye, lots of like natural dyeing kits, lots of um, plain linen fabric and like cotton tablecloths and stuff. Like they had things that you could dye on as well as fabric and like bedding. It was like lots of different stuff all in the same store, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, they also had some hand carved crochet hooks, which were beautiful, but I'm not like super into crochet, so I didn't get any, but I did get some hand carved buttons. So I took their little 
card about their buttons because I was speaking with the cashier and she was saying that they've been working with the same like group of artisans that's carving these buttons for like 10 years or something like that. And these, all of the buttons that I got are uh, made out of recycled wood. Let's see what they say here. So they say that the hand carved buttons are from uh, craftsmen in Nepal. Some of them are wood, some of them are horn and bone from domestic animals, mostly water buffalo, which have died of natural causes. Oh, they've worked with this specific group of artisans for over 15 years and they'd supply all of the buttons for their bedding and their clothing and obviously loose buttons to purchase as well. So they have all of their buttons in like a big set of drawers and they're all mixed up. So I think you can buy like button cards where they're all together and they match, but I was picking through the drawers and I picked out a bunch of buttons all in the same size, but with different carvings on them. I will do like a little cutaway video, but they're all similar of like this light kind of lacquered wood with different motifs. And I got quite a few of these buttons that I feel like I can use for a lightweight cardigan, like a lightweight fingering weight cardigan, any cardigan that would need a bunch of like tinier buttons. I really like those because all of the buttons, they don't necessarily match, but they all go together and it's all really subtle. Like they're not super obviously mismatched, which is very much my vibe. So the last yarn store that we went to while we were in Vancouver was Bad Anna's. So this one is um, definitely like, it's a pretty big store. So it's more of like your local yarn store where they have lots of different brands, some local, some of like the big name brands. There was like, gosh, I think it was Cascade that they had a lot of, like they have a wide variety of different yarn suppliers all in the same store. And it's a pretty big location. Besides like yarn and stuff, they also had embroidery kits. They had lots of fiber. I think they had some jewelry making. Or, no, they had needle felting. They had some needle felting kits. So like lots of different craft supplies all within like the fiber world. So Bad Anna's definitely had a lot of like the more, not commercial, but like bigger named brands that are really easy to get. So I was specifically looking for what are brands that are going to be harder for me to access while I'm at home. And the one yarn that I got, I'll have to zoom in so you can actually see the label, but I find it really funny. It's SBY Fiber Mercantile, which is Shirley Bryan. This is their sock yarn, uh, Tumnus Tweed. It is 85% Superwash BFL and 15% Donegal Nep. It, it is their sock yarn. And the name of this shade is Summer Nights Ballpark Lights. And I thought it was really interesting. I've never seen like a steely bluey gray with tweed. I have knit a pair of socks with like a tweed sock yarn before, and it is like full fall vibes. It is very like cozy. It makes you want to like curl up next to a fire with a good book, or maybe like put on a pair of hiking boots or something like a fall activity needs to happen in a pair of tweed socks. But I thought that this was a really cool color to mix with the tweed. And it has both white and black and kind of like a brownie mix with the tweed, which I think, hmm? Can you see? I think this is going to make a really beautiful pair of socks in my future and I'm excited to work with it. And then the last thing that I got while we were at Bad Anna's was a little brew. Blah, 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 blah. I'm starting to get myself tongue tied, but like I said, I was on the lookout for fiber and they had tons of fiber specifically for needle felting and it was all super cheap. I think this was $5 Canadian and I'm not sure exactly what kind of sheep it is because like I said, it, they, I think, specifically had this for needle felting, not necessarily for spinning, but I figured it would be good practice fiber and not like super precious so that if I end up messing it up or if I like hate it, that I, it's not a huge investment. It was only $5, which is even less in USD but it is fairly soft and super consistent in color. So I did figure that if this turns out well, I could use this to ply it with this because the colors definitely go together. 
and it could like center or ground this a little bit more by having that consistent shade next to it. Okay, so that is everything that I got for myself while we were in Vancouver, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have a birthday. <laughs> It has recently been my 30th birthday, actually, and I told my husband, who worked with my mom and my mother-in-law, to kind of coordinate um, what I would like for my birthday, which was to get into drop spindles. So let me show you everything kind of... I'm going to show like things together. So first thing is my husband got me a couple of drop spindles. You can see that I have already been practicing. Uh, he got these from a maker on Etsy. I will have to put their name somewhere on the screen because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But he got me these spindles, one of which is quite lightweight. I have been practicing this with some Nutidin yarn. It is not, <laughs> I, you don't draft it at all because if you did, it would immediately break and I constantly break it even <laughs> without trying. But it is super satisfying, especially for a learner, because you can't make it go super thick and thin. So I'm literally just practicing like the motions of spinning it and then like allowing the twist to go back into the fluffy part of the pencil roving, but it makes it super consistent and it makes it look like you're way better than you actually are. So this has been a lot of fun. I do think I prefer this smaller size because I also have been trying it with some like knit picks roving whatever their bare roving is on the larger spindle it's a little bit heavier I definitely have a more difficult time getting this going and keeping it going I'm also really having a hard time learning how to draft it like you can even see I'm like really struggling to make it pull apart so that is something that I definitely neatly need to learn more of but i'm trying to get a relatively consistent spin you can see it is a little bit thick and thin but it's not terrible for my first real shot at spinning my mom and i actually took a drop spinning class at a local yarn store <clears throat> when i was 10 maybe i was pretty young so i haven't touched it in two decades that's crazy but I really wanted to give it a shot this year. And along with those two drop spindles, my mom also got me a little Turkish spindle. And this one is, again, I'm gonna have to see if I can find the name of it. It is actually printed on the bottom here. I just can't read it because it's in cursive. It may be Snyder. Yeah, it's Snyder. So this, it says 25 grams. This is a little drop spindle, uh, a Turkish spindle, I should say that comes apart and goes together really easily. I am really excited to give this a whirl. Ugh, what a pun. But I think that Turkish spindles are just really cute. And the yarn that you create on them is called turtles because it looks like little turtles with the legs coming out of it. And I just find that so charming. So I'm not sure, ex I need a little bit more, um, I need to watch some videos before I start the Turkish spindle because I did watch a bunch on the regular drop spindle with the top whirl before I got started. I already had like kind of that knowledge in the back of my brain just from seeing those videos in the last few months, but I definitely need to give a little bit more research to the Turkish spindle before I start on this. So if you are somebody who spins and you have recommendations on how to learn without going to a class, I don't think Either of the local yarn stores, Lord, where did that accent come from? But I don't think any of the local yarn stores here have spinning classes. I guess I should double check that. But I was thinking about maybe doing like the School of Sweet Georgia. I know that they have a couple of spinning classes. I don't know if any of them are specifically on drop spinning, but I have been watching videos from Jillian Eve as well as Soulful Spinning. Those are the two that I've found so far on YouTube who have like multiple spinning videos that are pretty clear and they like show what they're doing really well. So if you have any other recommendations like please let me know like what should I check out? What should I try to do virtually? Because I need some help especially with like drafting and 
you know, just practice. I literally started this like a week ago. I'm doing my best to try to not get mad at myself for not being instantly perfect at it because, because that is like my natural tendency. Like for example, I was working on both of these last night and was getting really frustrated with this one because I'm having a hard time drafting it and pulling the fibers apart. And so I just put it down for the evening and started working on this one, but I was really tired and I think I started spinning it the opposite direction. Um, and I'm really not sure how to even check for that. So I might pull it and I don't know. I don't know. I might wind like a little ball with this because this, as I said, I'm spinning this with uh, some new to din yarn that came for free with my order. Like this was just like a little bundle of extras that was tossed in there, which is really, really nice. But it's also not something that, like I don't really know what I could even get out of this amount of yarn. So it is nice to practice spinning with. So those are the three spindles that I got. I also got a little bit of fiber that my mom sent along to me. So I got this one beautiful, I don't know if this would be called a braid. I don't know all of the terminology. I'm di like such a beginner with spinners. I'm such a beginner spinner, but this is some hand dyed merino by Fab, Fab Juice. What? I'm gonna have to Google this company. It looks like it should say Fabulous Fibers, but it's spelled F-R-A-B-J-O-U-S. Fabulous. I have no idea, but this is a really beautiful hand dyed merino yarn for wet spinning, sorry, for hand spinning, wet felting, and other wool crafts. The name of the colorway is Tea, Toast, and Cake. It is like so lofty and soft and like open feeling. So this is definitely like really, really loose and open feeling as compared to like this from Sweet Georgia. I know that they're different yarns. So this is um, Merino, as I said, this is Cordial. This feels like quite dense, like the fibers are much closer together, whereas this pink one is much looser. Like it feels like the fibers might actually be easier to draft, but this is just so many beautiful colors all together. Like I said, I'll probably see how I can make it into like an ombre. I just love all of these colors, it's like a dark red, dark kind of plummy purple, a pink that's in between them and a bright orangey red color. I think that's just beautiful. She also sent a little bundle of a much more like precious fiber mix. So this is, I believe, merino, silk, and something else. I'll have to double check exactly what the fiber content was, but it is so shiny like I'm not sure if the shine really shows off and it's like oddly very cool to the touch it's kind of funny but it is super super soft very silky so this is just really beautiful yarn I'm gonna save for when I know what I'm doing a little bit better and that way I don't mess up my nicer fibers I definitely need to take some classes. I want to like dedicate at least a little bit of time to spinning every day, even though I have like a million knitting projects that I'm working on right now. But I want to make sure that I give myself the time to practice so that I get like that muscle memory so that things go more smoothly. It was kind of funny because I was, I was practicing a little bit on spinning last night and then I was getting frustrated because I kept breaking the yarn and I was having a hard time drafting and it, it got to the point where I was just like, okay, you need to just set it down because you're just going to get mad. And so I set it down and I picked up my knitting and I just like started going and I was like, oh, like that's what I need to do. I need to get like that muscle memory where you just do it without having to like really think that much about it. And it took me literal years to be able to do that with my knitting. So I also need to give myself years to be able to get there with spinning as well. Okay, slightly unrelated, but my mother-in-law also got me a flight of stitch markers from Coco Knits. These are super cute. They're like lots of, it's all of the different stitch markers that they have. They're different uh, sizes and shapes. So I have all of those to play with now so that I can <laughs> decide which kind of shapes that I like. I actually really need these jumbo ones right now because I'm working on a sweater with uh, 
size 11 needles and literally none of my stitch markers fit. <laughs> so I'm glad to have these so that I can work on that. But the last bit of things for spinning are books. So my husband got me this book, Respect the Spindle by Abby Frankmont. And it is like the drop spindle encyclopedia. I started reading this and I really did. I actually read quite a lot of it. They get into like the literal physics of how like drop spindles work. It is as comprehensive as can be. I was also starting to like read this before I even started spinning and was getting a little bit overwhelmed. So I think I need to give this a slight bit of rest before I get further into the weeds with it because she talks about how she learned spinning um, growing up in the Andes, I believe, where... So the author of this book grew up in the Andes of Peru where they start learning how to spin with a drop spindle as like babies. So she, she says that she started learning at like five or something like that, which was years too late which I find very funny. I'm like, I just turned 30, so what, how good could I possibly get? But she goes through like how it's like really a part of their culture. You do it everywhere. Like how, like some knitters take their knitting absolutely everywhere and they like knit while they're on walks and stuff like that. I don't do that, but she said that's basically how it is with spinning in the Andes. And like a lot of people do production spinning as like their work, like they sell their hand spun drop spindled yarn, which I think is wild. But she said, like, once you really have that muscle memory down and you're able to do it like kind of anywhere, that it can be faster than spinning on a wheel. So that is very interesting information to have. I think like if you are looking to get into drop spinning, you kind of need to read this book. It is, like I said, extremely comprehensive tons if you can see of pictures throughout that are really beautiful really well done i'm gonna like go in here if you can see like look how fine and thin they're able to get the yarn on drop spindles i'm like one day maybe but like right now in comparison mine looks like extraordinarily chunky <laughs> but one day i will get a little bit better at it so this has been really interesting to read through. It's definitely something that I'm going to be able to reference a lot moving forward. My mom also picked me up a magazine called Spinoff. It's not a magazine that I've ever heard of before and I honestly haven't read it yet, but uh, it looks like there's a lot of interesting information on spinning and some patterns throughout it as well. Like this one is talking about spinning fiber from hairy sheep. Um, It gets into like carding. There's like lots of different spinning related content filled in this. Well, that's kind of cool. Like adding beads to bulky singles. Either way, like I said, haven't read this yet, but I got that from my mom. And then the last two things are knitting books. So both of these came to me from my mother-in-law. They are the Elizabeth Zimmerman books, uh, Knitting Workshop, and then The Opinionated Knitter. I have been wanting to order these books for ages and I just basically never got around to it but I am I find Elizabeth Zimmerman's writing so funny and so relatable even now which is just wild because she like she passed away in 1968 and her writing is like still genuinely really funny now like her knitting patterns are funny I was reading one part of it and like the instructions for a turtleneck was like pick up stitches in an even number knit in a two by two ribbing until you're sick of it <laughs> which I just find hilarious but I'm really excited to dig into these I know her patterns are meant to be quite um or they're not hand holdy right like they are very much like you figure it out like you figure out what's the best way to cast on that works for you which is how I prefer a pattern. I don't love it when patterns are like, I don't like when patterns are like super handholdy and tell you absolutely everything you have to do. So I'm looking forward to digging into these. These also, if you can see, have like tons and tons of uh, really high quality photographs and diagrams throughout. A lot of the knitwear does look slightly old fashioned because it 
it is, they're quite old, but there are quite a lot of patterns that I think have really beautiful motifs to them. Let me see like this one. I think that's really pretty, stuff like that. They have a lot of color work designs and I really enjoy knitting color work. So I'm excited to dig into both of these. Like I said, I did just get them. So I haven't really dug into any of the content yet, but I'm excited to have these not only for the patterns, but also for Elizabeth Zimmerman's wit. I really enjoy her writing style, so I'm excited to dig into those. Okay, I think I've talked enough. I might need to like, go get some water for my throat. I haven't talked for like this long in all in one extended go in a long time. I actually like, I had an entire morning full of meetings and then I'm doing this over my lunch break. So I've basically been talking for what feels like five hours straight, which is not my typical day-to-day -day life. So I'm going to go rest my voice and I will see you sometime soon. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of this fiber yarning goodness. I am looking forward to putting it away because I, as much fun as it is to have like a giant basket full of your gifts for yourself and that you've received, I also am like someone who likes to be very organized. So I'm excited to find a place in my stash for all of my fiber and to put my yarn into its new home upstairs in the attic. But that is all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stick around. If you want to, by subscribing to this channel, there's a button I'm sure somewhere around me and I will see you hopefully soon. Bye.